Is your partner standing between you and a good night's sleep? Many couples today are opting for a sleep divorce. It's choosing to sleep in different rooms instead of together. The practice is gaining a bit of traction. We're talking to career wellness coach Elizabeth Pearson, who was recently featured in a Wall Street Journal article with her husband, who got a sleep divorce eight years ago, and she joins us this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me back. It's always special to be back in my hometown of Chicago. Why does this seem to be happening more now? I think more and more people are talking about it. And when we talk about things, they become a little less taboo. And I think we're also seeing a lot of statistics that show that sleep is linked to so many other health advantages. So I think it's time. I think we're a little less judgy about it. And so everybody's really curious. So you've been married for 16 years. About eight years ago, you and your husband started doing this. Was it snoring that was the initial push or what was it? I mean, Robin, I think you know it was. Um, <laughs> a lot of times it's snoring. And um, my husband, yeah, I mean, we're, he's six six. I'm six feet tall. So we're both just, you know, larger people. And every time he rolled over, it would wake me up. I'm a light sleeper. He could sleep through a tornado drill and be fine. So it was this thing of like, I wanted to go to bed early and get up early. He wanted to go to bed a little bit later. So we just weren't syncing up anymore. I wonder if some people have been hesitant to do it just because they fear it'll somehow impact their sex life. It really doesn't, though, because I think what impacts your sex life is being upset with your partner throughout the night and waking up wanting to take their head off because you were up all night and not sleeping. So what we found was <laughs> that at night, we were exhausted anyway. We had worked all day. We had spent time with our children. That wasn't when it was happening for us. So it, nothing actually changed except it got better because it was wonderful. You can be intimate, and then your partner can go into their bedroom to sleep. It's fabulous. But that's a long walk. You know, sometimes intimacy <laughs> just happens when, you know, it, it's not even tied to sex. It's just, you know, discussions right. uh, and when you're laying in bed at night, possibly. Has that been brought up yeah. to you? I feel like a man will walk a few steps down the hall. Um, it wasn't too far. So I think that it's all about, you know. As long and, and as he's doing the walking. walking. <laughs> yeah, he's walking. <laughs> Was yeah. he pushing this or were you pushing this or who brought this up first? Well, it kind of happened organically because we were both traveling a lot for work. And what we had found was that we were sleeping wonderfully in hotels. And it was when we were home that we weren't sleeping so well. And then once we had our children, we were kind of tagging in and tagging out, like, who was going to be up with the baby? And so it was kind of natural. And then one night I said, I think that this is, we're on to something here. How would you feel about, you know, semi-temporarily moving into the guest room? And then years went by, and we actually just did a renovation, which is why Wall Street Journal came and interviewed us. We have two primary suites now. And oh. even when we were doing the renovation, spending a bunch of money on our house, we looked at each other. I said, okay, so we're good with this, right? And he said, absolutely. So it was something that we really both had to be on the same page about. Well, it seems to be working. For more, you can check out Elizabeth's website or follow her on Instagram. She also has a book, Career Confinement, How to Free Yourself and Your Guides and Seize the Fire of Inspired Work. Thanks for being with us, Elizabeth. Thanks for having me back. Thank you.